Researchers at UNSW Sydney have achieved a breakthrough in energy storage. Instead of lithium ions, they use protons to develop a particularly powerful battery. The secret? A novel organic material that moves protons extremely quickly and that stores energy efficiently. The battery lasts a long time, charges quickly and works even at temperatures below zero. We'll find out now whether this battery can be produced at an industrial scale, what is so special about the new material and whether it will really replace the lithium battery. With that, welcome to the German Science Guy. My name is Dr. Jakob Botton and in Germany we say Los geht's. Storing energy is becoming increasingly important, especially in relation to the energy transition. This is because renewable energy is dependent on daily fluctuations caused by weather conditions. That is why the energy must be stored somewhere. The demand for batteries is therefore increasing significantly every year. At the moment, the annual demand for lithium-ion batteries is around 1 terawatt hour. Looking at market forecasts, this could increase to between 2 and 6 terawatt hours by 2030. In the longer term, the figures even expected to reach 10 terawatt hours. Lithium batteries alone will not be able to meet this demand. And that's mainly for two reasons. Lithium is a limited resource and it's not evenly distributed around the world. This means that potential supply bottlenecks also play a role and there is also a strong dependency on other countries, to be precise, especially China. And that's exactly why we need other types of batteries. A lot of research is already being done in this area and some alternatives such as sodium ion batteries sound very promising. However, one alternative has now attracted particular interest, the proton battery. It could overcome many of the challenges associated with lithium batteries. Although it's still in its infancy, it promises to be even better than the familiar lithium batteries in some respects. We will talk about how this is possible in a moment, but first let's take a closer look at a proton battery. Proton batteries use hydrogen ions as charge carriers. Conventional batteries often use lithium ions instead. Ions are charged atoms or molecules. The charge comes from the atoms absorbing or releasing electrons. If they have more electrons, they are negatively charged or if they have a lack of electrons, they are positively charged. The special thing about hydrogen is that it consists of only one electron and one proton. This means that when an electron is released, only the proton remains. And that is why the word proton can also be used as a synonym for hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions therefore also have the smallest ion radius and the lowest mass of all elements. This is because other ions, such as lithium ions, generally have a higher number of protons. Lithium has three protons, as you may know from chemistry class, which can be seen from its atomic number. And the number of protons remains the same even when electrons are released. So in the case of lithium, there are three protons and still two electrons when it becomes a positively charged ion. It therefore makes sense that it is larger and heavier than the hydrogen ion. Its small size allows the proton to diffuse extremely quickly through materials, so it can move faster. And this is exactly what the proton battery takes advantage of. A proton battery consists of an anode and a cathode, which are separated by an electrolyte. The anode stores protons during the charging process. When discharging, the protons then migrate across the electrolyte to the cathode. The electrolyte in proton batteries is liquid and usually water-based. The function of a proton battery is based on the movement of protons and electrons. This means that chemical and electrical reactions take place. When the battery discharges, a redox reaction starts at the anode. Protons are released from the anode material. They then migrate through the aqueous electrolyte to the cathode, where they are absorbed into the cathode material. In addition to protons, electrons are also released at the anode. These cannot flow directly through the electrolyte and therefore migrate to the cathode via the external circuit. This is the electric current. In summary, during discharge, both the protons and the electrons move from the anode to the cathode. The protons move through the electrolyte and the electrons via the external circuit. When the battery is charged, this process is reversed. Electrons flow from an external power source to the anode. This causes the protons to move back to the anode. The flow of electrons is driven by the different redox potentials of the electrodes. The redox potential describes how well a material releases or absorbs electrons. Ideal Ideally, cathode materials should have high redox potentials and anode materials should have low redox potentials. This is because the anode releases protons and electrons during discharge. 
the redox potential at the anode is therefore low so that the electrons can be released efficiently. This reaction is also called an oxidation reaction. The reduction reaction takes place at the cathode. During this process, the protons are incorporated into the cathode material and electrons are absorbed from the external circuit. The redox potential at the cathode is therefore high so that the electrons can be absorbed efficiently. The redox potential therefore influences the flow of electricity and the battery voltage. As you may have noticed, the basic principle is similar in some ways to that of a lithium-ion battery. However, there are other differences besides the different charge carriers. We will clarify what these are in a moment. But first, let's take a look at how far research has progressed in terms of implementation. The history of proton batteries is still relatively recent. The first official proton battery was developed in 2014 by researchers at RMIT University in Australia. However, it was not very efficient. In 2020, a research group from Sweden managed to optimize the material and produce an organic proton battery. It had a service life of 500 charging cycles and a specific capacity of 60 mAh per gram. Let's talk briefly about this unit because it is not so familiar. However, it is very relevant in research and will also be important for later classifications. Milliampere hours is a unit for measuring battery capacity. In simple terms, it is how much electricity or charged carriers a battery can store and how much electricity it can then supply for an hour. The unit is linked to a unit of weight, so milliampere hours per gram. This means how much charge is stored per gram of material. The unit is used because it allows materials to be compared directly on the basis of their ability to store charge per gram without having to take into account the complexity of cell voltage. To make this more tangible, here's a small example. Material A has 150 mAh per gram and material B has 300 mAh per gram. Here one could say that material B can store twice as much electricity as material A for the same weight. Although this unit says something about the runtime and the amount of electricity that can be stored in a battery, it does not say anything about the energy density. In other words, how much energy can ultimately be stored per gram of battery, so to speak. To do this you need to know the voltage, then you can calculate the energy, that would be kilowatt hours, that we often use in our everyday life. Okay. Now back to the battery from Sweden. A specific capacity of 60 mAh per gram is still quite low, but there has now been a new breakthrough. Researchers at UNSW Sydney have developed a new organic carbon-based material. This material is particularly good at absorbing protons. The discovery revolves around the material tetraaminobenzoquinone, or in short TAPQ. TAPQ supports the rapid movement of protons through hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds generally play an important role in proton batteries. They allow protons to be easily transported through the electrolyte. In the process, protons jump from one hydrogen bond to the next. And this allows the protons to be conducted through the electrolyte efficiently and with low activation energy. In the electrodes, the protons can therefore be absorbed and released more quickly. Research originally began with the material tetrachlorobenzoquinone, which has four chlorine groups. It has already been used for electrode materials. However, the redox potential of the material is so impractical that it is actually too high to be used as an anode and too low to be used as a cathode. The scientists therefore replaced the chlorine groups with amino groups. This resulted in the improved material. They significantly reduced the redox potential for the anode, thereby increasing the difference between the two redox potentials. This in turn increases the overall voltage and energy efficiency. The researchers use the new TAPQ material as the anode and the original material without modifications as the cathode. With this combination, the researchers managed to significantly improve the proton battery and it now has a lot to offer. Firstly, they have a high specific capacity of 307 mAh per gram. Put simply, one gram of the anode material can supply 307 milliamps of current in one hour. This makes them one of the most powerful organic proton electrodes. Another advantage is their fast charging capability. Although charging times are not explicitly specified, the battery retains about 60% of its capacity even when the current density is increased 30-fold. This suggests that the battery can handle high charging currents. 
The battery also has a remarkable service life. It retains 71.2% of its original capacity after 3,500 complete charge and discharge cycles at room temperature. That is 3,000 more than the battery from Sweden from 2020. In addition, the battery performs excellently at low temperatures. Even at minus 30 degrees Celsius, it delivers a specific capacity of 201 mAh per gram. This is particularly useful in cold climates or when temperatures fluctuate greatly. Another important aspect is the use of safe and sustainable materials. The battery uses organic materials from quinone derivatives for the anode and the cathode. These are abundant and also environmentally friendly. In addition, the electrolyte is an aqueous solution of sulfuric acid, which is non-flammable and therefore very safe to use. Let's put these results into context and compare them with a classic lithium-ion battery. Let's take a look at the seven most important points. Number one, resource availability. Lithium-ion batteries rely on lithium, which is a fairly limited resource. Proton batteries use protons, or in other words, hydrogen ions. These are available everywhere, making the battery less dependent on complicated and sometimes really problematic supply chains. The electrode material is also organic and therefore more environmentally friendly. Lithium batteries still use metals, which makes them more difficult to recycle. We mustn't forget the environmental and social impact that partially occurs during mining. Number two, the capacity. In terms of performance, the proton battery is not bad. The new TAPQ anode material achieves a specific capacity of 307 milliampere hours per gram. The anode of a lithium ion battery is usually made of graphite and can deliver approximately 350 milliampere hours per gram. This shows that the proton battery can certainly compete with lithium ion batteries in this comparison, even if its capacity is slightly lower. Number three, temperature resistance. Lithium batteries often perform much worse in cold conditions. And when it comes to heat, everyone is familiar with the problem of a mobile phone battery overheating and becoming completely unusable. Test has shown that the proton battery remains powerful even at minus 30 degrees Celsius. Number four are the costs. The materials themselves are cheaper and widely available. At the moment, however, they are still quite expensive to manufacture. But if this type of battery were to be produced on a larger scale, prices would fall significantly. In the next few years, however, this is not realistic because of the large number of lithium batteries on the market. Number five, service life. In terms of service life, the proton battery outperforms a lithium-ion battery. Also, I have to say that these figures vary considerably. Depending on the electrode material quality and application, they range between 500 and 2500 cycles. There's still at least 1000 cycles less than the proton battery. Number six, fast charging capability. The proton battery can retain around 60% of its capacity, even when the current density is greatly increased. Lithium-ion batteries rely on special fast charging systems and frequent fast charging can also lead to thermal problems. Number seven and finally, safety. Proton batteries are superior in terms of safety. They use organic materials and an aqueous electrolyte, which makes them safer than lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries often use flammable electrolytes. The aqueous electrolyte makes them much less of fire hazard. This is in contrast to lithium ion batteries, which can sometimes even explode. This makes proton batteries more suitable for use in electric mobility or stationary energy storage system, at least in the term of safety. Despite the positive aspects of proton batteries, Lithium-ion batteries are currently leading the market due to their widespread use, scalability and established market presence. However, with all this potential, we must not forget the state of research. So let's get to the big hurdle, which you may already know from my videos. It is a part in every of my videos where we look at the difficulties of an innovation. Before that, ring the bell and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any more videos about inspiring tech innovations. So let's begin with a big hurdle. First of all, it's important to note that the battery presented here is only a prototype. Research has so far focused primarily on investigating the materials and not yet on commercial implementation. And that is precisely why we can only say at this point that the proton battery could potentially be better than the lithium ion battery. The first commercial lithium battery was launched back in 1991 and research began as early as the 1970s. The lithium ion battery has had a 40 year head start over the proton battery. 
it will be some time before the advantages of the proton battery can really be exploited. Scalable production process and end-of-life strategies will also have to be developed first. And despite the material's fairly good specific capacity, this does not mean that the entire battery is as efficient as a lithium-ion battery, for example. What is important for evaluating a battery is its energy density, but this cannot currently be specified because the voltage is missing. Furthermore, we only have the specific capacity of the anode material. However, to calculate the energy density, you would need the general specific capacity and not just that of the anode. Without precise energy density values, it is difficult to compare proton batteries directly with established technologies such as lithium-ion batteries. And it makes it difficult to make an informed decision about the potential use and competitiveness. What can already be said, however, is that proton batteries offer other advantages due to their environmentally friendliness, safety and temperature resistance, which definitely makes them interesting for certain applications. And the fact that we are reducing our dependence on lithium-ion batteries is certainly an advantage. Researchers are currently focusing on further developing the battery, particularly new cathode materials. And they highlight another point that is also very exciting, namely hydrogen storage. Molecular hydrogen is very reactive and therefore difficult to store and transport. However, hydrogen is more stable in the form of protons. The development of materials for storing protons opens up the possibility of transporting hydrogen more efficiently around the world and accessing it when needed. Like a kind of hydrogen sponge. This is still a long way off, but the potential is there. Of course, if there's an update, I will inform you on this channel. In the meantime, here's an extremely interesting video about a panel that directly produces hydrogen without being a solar panel. So you should check out this video and I say Auf Wiedersehen, what means goodbye in German. Your Jacob.